Uh, let's see, really happy to be here uh, at the conference. And uh, how many people are teachers? Great, okay. And anybody in the process or has experience teaching online? Great, great. And uh, anybody in the process or teaching a MOOC? Oh, good. And uh, any math teachers? Right on. Okay, good. All right. So, um, let's see. So I taught um, this uh, MOOC in, for college algebra just recently, and I'm signed up to teach. A second one starts July 1st. So this was my first experience with MOOCs, and um, give you a little bit about my background. Never taught an online course. <laughs> Never used a learning management system. <laughs> Got a teacher account in Canvas and started putting together a college algebra course just for fun, just for myself. So I wasn't planning on doing anything with it. Never planned on teaching a MOOC, but they asked me to. So that's my background. So you're looking at somebody with no experience in online classes, no experience with MOOCs, anything like that. So I'm not a high tech person. Uh, so now you'll see kind of what happened. Um, here was my goals for the course. I wanted to, when I set out, I'm gonna set up this course do this college algebra class. I want it to be uh, as much like my, my classroom as possible, okay? So I want to do as much as I can uh, to make it look like it would look if you came into my classroom. And then the second thing, I decided to stay just within Canvas, okay? So I, when I found out I was going to teach a MOOC, then I went out and I signed up for a bunch of MOOCs myself just to see what was going on. And so I get in these MOOCs and they want you to get a Flickr account and you've got to go to Google Docs and you've got to do all this stuff. I thought, you know, I, it's going to be hard enough for me to just do the MOOC, so I'm going to stay within Canvas for everything that I do. Here's the statistics for the course. Uh, it was a free course and uh, no credit, right? A no credit, free college algebra course. 500 people enrolled in it. 80 participated in it and seven people finished <laughs> with a grade of 50% or more, okay? And if they got a grade of 50 Okay. So back to the thing about trying to make it look like my classroom. What do you see if you walk into my classroom? Well, you're going to see me, right? And you're going to see students. OK. And then what happens? Well, I engage the students. I'm talking to them, showing them things, asking them questions, stuff like that. But probably the more important part is that the students measure, measure their progress and position in class by what other students say and do inside and outside of class. That's the thing that really goes on. That's the difference. I think between an online class and, an in, and a, a, a classroom class is that when you're in that classroom, and most of the classes I teach, by the way, are developmental math. So it's like elementary algebra, intermediate algebra, college algebra is a higher level course for me to teach than the ones I normally teach. Those students that I have in general, that's the way I think. I think about these students when I put these classes together, kind of poor study skills, lack of experience with success, things like that. So what goes on in class is very important to them because they're listening to what somebody else asks the question. They see how the teacher responds to that, all of those things. This turns out to be a very important part of the class. Um, the people in the back that are standing, there's plenty of seats up here and around. You want to come on in and take a seat? Okay, so I'm going to take you to the class that I made in Canvas. Um, and I'm just going to go through some of the elements in the class. And then you can think about if what I'm doing in this uh, makes it as much as it can be made to seem like a classroom experience. Okay, so um, first of all, this is the class. I read some blogs. I don't know how many people know who Keith Devlin is. Okay, Stanford University professor, teaches at Coursera, um, taught a class called... Uh, mathematical thinking. 
from Stanford University. It's a MOOC. 68,000 people signed up for it. And then I, he had a little blog that he kept as he went through the class. And one of the things he said, what's one of the problems with MOOCs is people don't know where to start. So I read that and I thought, well, I'll just put a little button in here that says start here. So here's the front page, start here. So if you click on that button, okay, you're going to see the whole course, all the assignments. It, it's very consistent. It looks like this throughout. It's arranged by the chapters with the book, so on and so forth. Now let me take you to this mouse is not going to work. Section 2.1. Now, what you're going to see here in section 2.1 is very consistent throughout the whole course. So you're going to have a start here. You're going to have objectives. Right here is going to be the reading and uh, working problems part of the college algebra course. Then connecting with your classmates. Take five videos. This is where I bring in the things that I consider interesting in and around mathematics. And I call them take five because the videos never last longer than five minutes. And this is something that I do in my classroom, so I want to bring it over into the online class as well. Study skills, okay, so these are kind of different st study skills. This study skill has to do with, you know, when students get together outside of class and complain about the teacher or the mm -hmm. class. So I go through this whole thing uh, based on what a student had told me um, that he was doing that and just ask the students, is this really doing you any good? complaining about the teacher, complaining about the class, or are you giving yourself an excuse for not doing well? So we have some really, I think, kind of interesting sort of study skills, and then down here, a survey. So let me go back up to the beginning. So when you come into my classroom, what do you see? You see me. So every single lesson, there's an introductory video by me. Let's see if this comes out. Hello, and welcome to nope. We're on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule for turning in the assignments. Um, that's going to work out really well for uh, doing algebra. That's a good pace to go at. If you go any faster than that, you may end up catching up with me because I'm only a few days ahead of you preparing these lessons. So that's right. Uh, let's see. In this lesson, we're going to, in the Take 5 video, answer the question, why do we call it algebra? It seems like kind of a strange name for this subject that we're studying. And the answer to that question turns out to start a very fascinating journey that I think you're going to like. We have a study skill video that's going to um, talk about complaining, what happens when you complain about a class or a teacher, things like that. I think you'll also find that interesting. So welcome to section 2.1. Okay, so let's see. Let's go back here for a second. Hello and welcome. So <clears throat> this is just like in my classroom, okay? I'm going to talk to them every day. I I've already have an agenda of what's going to happen. I want to see if I can do that in the MOOC. So... I want to point out that there's a nice take by video on why do we call it algebra. That's part of the course. Even though it's something extra that I bring in, that's part of the course. And we've got the complaining video. And then I also, in class, like to keep them off balance a little bit. So I use a lot of postage stamps and the transparencies I use. This is a postage stamp of the mathematician Fibonacci. So I, I want them to look around the screen and think, what is he doing? This is what they're going to see when they get to the Take 5 video. And this is a postage stamp of the guy that wrote the first algebra book. And the story goes through Baghdad, Iraq in the year 750. So a really interesting journey. But for me, for trying to teach this class, all this stuff is set up here on the screen. They're just looking at a little introductory video that takes 15 seconds. OK, but it's all set up for me. So I'm able to do that. And they see one of these every section that they go to. Look, these things are really easy to make. I could make one right now on this little computer. It's very easy to make an opening video, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, no big deal. You know, a lot of mine just start with, good morning, you know, and then here's what we're going to cover, and that's it, 30 seconds, it's gone. So I think that's a really important part of the course. Uh, let's see. Uh, at dinner last night, I sat uh, at a table with a, a man I'd never met before, but he teaches at San Jose State University, and he teaches instructional design. He teaches people how to teach online classes. And so I said to him, uh, what's the most important thing for uh, an online class to be successful? And he said, instructor presence. So it kind of confirms that thing. Yeah, you've got to have these opening videos. But they're really easy to do. Just do them, put them on YouTube, pull them into Canvas, no problem.
Uh, okay, so I wanted to stay within Canvas, so I'm going to show you here. This is section 2.1. I'm asking them to read that. So the textbook comes up, and they can read through the textbook here. Oop, not showing up as well as I'd like. Okay. Do the match problem worksheets. I'll just show you that. These are examples very similar to the examples in the book. I don't collect these, right? This is just the assignment for them to do. They're going to do an online graded assignment, but they're interested in doing well in college algebra. Here's the assignment. They're not going to turn it in. My next time through the class, what I'm going to do is have them work. I'm pointing at the screen. Have them work problem number one, right? And just photograph it with their iPhone. Send it to me. I'll turn it into a PDF. I'll mark it up. I'm only interested in the form of their work, not their answer. They have answers to all these things. But in developmental math in particular, their work is scattered all over the place, and it keeps them from being successful. So I want some way to grade their work. I'm going to do that with a cell phone next time, but this time I didn't do it. OK, so back to the course. Do, 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 do. OK, now here is, this is just something that I have that are kind of unique to these books, but you know, this is not a commercial presentation, but I'll tell you this is a part of the course. You can find videos all over the place on Khan Academy, whatever, to put with the examples that you want students to work. In my case, I already have these done with this little publishing company I have. So every example in the book is accompanied by these videos. So they click on the person they want to see do the video. So next we want to solve a linear they can watch me. They can watch Ariel. You're going to solve for x. She was a student of mine in college algebra. Or they can watch Matt. Or the last person is Cynthia. Vamos a resolver por x en la ecuación. She El will do it in Spanish. OK, so. Uh, they, so I, they, this is a little aside to think, but about four years ago, I hired some students out of my college algebra class to help me proofread this textbook. They were so conscientious, I put them in the TV studio. With very little coaching, they got really good at this. If I was starting my career over again, if I was more towards the beginning than the end, I would make them doing videos part of the course. It's a completely different experience than teaching. Uh, I have people here working problems on video, doing a great job on problems they couldn't get right on a test. I mean, it's really absolutely amazing. But this is part of that peer part of the course. They get to see other people like them working videos. So not only are these their peer instructors, they're also role models for them. Look, I can be an athletic uh, person. We do little interviews with them. They get to know them a little bit better and still be good at mathematics. So there's a lot going on with that little part of it. But that is the course. I don't want to get stuck in that part too much. OK. So I'm going to skip the next one, but let's go down here to connecting with classmates. Let's tell you something interesting I found out. Whoops. Open a new tab. OK, so discussion groups. OK, these are just great, just absolutely great. Remember, there's no credit for this class. So every discussion, I have a lead-in question. I give them one point extra credit. They love extra credit. Even though there's no credit for the class, you get everybody, <laughs> everybody participates. You know, if I, if I do this in my, at my school, people say, Pat, you're too easy. Stop giving people extra credit. I'm all nervous about it. But here's a class that there's no credit. I give extra credit for everything. They just flock to it and start answering <laughs> questions. So in one word, sentence, or phrase, describe your reaction to the study skill video on complaining. OK, now here's the part where they get to see what are their colleagues in the class, where do they stand in the class with respect to everybody else, how do they feel about that video. It also causes them to have to go watch that study skill video. So extra credit for every survey, every um, discussion group, whatever. One point for every little answer that they give. At the end of the class, some of the people had more than 100% score. I emailed them. I said, you got it. You did you, great. You got 115% in this class. Congratulations. They were thrilled, and they got the certificate. So, OK, another thing uh, along the same lines. Let's see. Anytime you want, there's the study skill video. Here's a little survey. 
Now this is the instructor view, so it's going to come up. Let's see how far it is. Okay, so here's the survey. Look, you know, you're, this is even better than teaching in the classroom, these surveys, because anytime you're thinking, I wonder what they're thinking, I wonder what they're doing, you do a survey and you make it extra credit, right? Extra credit for each one of these questions that they answer. On average, how much time are you spending on the match problem worksheets to each section? Okay, I get an answer. And because it's extra credit, they're all answering. So I, and then I can email them the statistics on this. Let's see. With regard to the videos that accompany the problems in the book, march th mark the responses that you agree with. The videos are very helpful. I rarely watch the videos. I like some of the instructors better than others. I don't use them much, but when I need them, I'm glad they're there. Would you recommend this course to a friend? I'm just sitting in my office thinking, I wonder about this or that. I just do a survey real quick. It's really easy in Canvas to pull that survey in, make it extra credit. They'll all answer it. You'll see exactly what's going on. Okay, so let's go back to modules. Let me go to first three are just introductory modules. I'll go to working with Canvas. Same thing, start here, objectives. By the way, I think mathematics is an attractive, colorful subject. And so when I set out to do this, I wanted to make sure that this course looked that way too. So I went to a little extra work to bring in some icons, make it look pretty. Very important to me. I don't want to be in just a kind of black and white thing. That's the way I look at mathematics. I want this to reflect that. Very easy to do in Canvas. So, um, Discussion group. Let's see what happens here. OK. so. Another one where I'm, this is something I do in class. I ask them this question the first week of class every day. I ask them the same question. Think about this. You're going to answer this question the second week of class. But I can do it here. What personal quality is most important to continued success in mathematics? One point extra credit. So of course, they try to think about it. And they answer this question. And you can see down here, again, they're kind of seeing where they stand in the class. People put in answers. Other people say, yeah, you know, I thought that same thing myself, blah, blah, blah. So um, here's all that. Then later I can follow up on this. So let's go back to modules. I've just, I've just picked out things I want you to see. Um, there's not a real good order to anything, but the whole goal is to try to make it seem like the classroom I would have if I taught on campus, but in Canvas. Let me go here to... Section 6.1. Okay. There's so many things that you can do, so many fun things. Okay. It looks just the same, right? It's always consistent. Start here. Hello, and welcome to Section 6.1, Exponential Functions. I'm Catherine. I'm one of your TAs for your Canvas course. In this section, we'll be working with a type of function. Okay. So I have some TAs that help answer the discussion group questions, things like that. I think it's important that they see everybody that's working on the course. So I bring the TAs in, have them do a little opening video. They love it. The TAs love it. You, show, you, you see them in the office and, and they look one way. They show up for the video. They got makeup. Their hair is done. It's like, you know, they, if they say, if we don't make anybody do anything, but if we say, would you like to make a video, and they say yes, it means they're really interested in their presentation on video like that. Okay. so. That is a really fun, easy thing to do and connect students with the people that are doing their things. Okay, now, uh, take five video success skills. Okay, so I've been doing videos to go with mathematics textbooks since 1981. I've always had the same philosophy. You have to see the person that's working the problem. Okay, so, but with online classes, you have to have a lot of screen captures, right? Okay, so. This will be a follow-up to what quality is most important for success in mathematics. Sorry. Well, what were you trying to say? Yeah, absolutely. You just said that you, you believe in seeing the person. Uh, yeah. Remember earlier in the course we asked you what personal quality was most important for Canadian?
Yeah. Um, I like Khan Academies. Uh, Saul Khan and I both started putting videos on the internet on YouTube at the same time. Calculus videos. I used to look at his videos. I don't know if he looked at mine, but um, I could tell when he quit his job and put the computer in his closet because all of a sudden a whole bunch more videos start popping up. It was amazing. Um, I like his videos. I think that's a great resource. My personal philosophy is continued I want success them to see in mathematics. Something. Well, you gave a lot of different so, answers to that, and I want to take you over to the computer now and show you those answers that you gave. What personal quality is most important for capture, continued right? success in mathematics? Right from me to the screen capture. Here's what some of you said. Patience, yeah. persistence, hard work, determination. I put their names down Here's with all the people in the course that answered like that way. Them. They feel more a part of the class, practice. right? How easy is this? This is a word file. Never stop. Right? Perseverance, diligence. Okay. These people answered that. Curiosity. I thought that was a great question. So before I did this, I have some ideas. Okay, there's a great little program called ScreenFlow. It captures the camera and the screen at the same time. All you do is $99. All you do is go in and edit from one to the other. What do you want to see? The person on the video or do you want to see the screen capture? So I can go back and forth. It's just like talking to people in class with ScreenFlow, and then it goes to the screen capture. Now, the, I, I want to see the person working the problem in a math video. When um, I've emailed Maria some questions I had, she'll send me back a video that's all screen capture. I like that. I like the Canvas screen capture videos. I just want information really quickly. But I'm not a student in college algebra trying to figure out what's going on. So the majority of my videos will always have the person that's working the problem in it. Okay. I did this, right? Yeah. It's going back. My goals that lie outside the topics. This is just for me personally, but I put this class together trying to do these things. So now you can see, after I've showed you some of these things, whether this was possible. These are pretty big goals. They lie outside the curriculum. Transfer the responsibility for their success from me to them. Study skills. Share with them the things I find interesting in and around mathematics. Take five videos, easy. Have them see mathematics as a uniquely human endeavor that connects us with each other. We'll see. I hope they get that out of it. Give them tools that will point them towards success in other courses. Right? Those are big goals, but I really feel like with Canvas, I have the um, tools in that to be able to do these. And videos are very easy to make. And then with the quizzes and the uh, surveys and things like that in Canvas couldn't be easier. My advice, decide what you want to do, then find the resources and technology to do it. Just decide what do you want your course to look like. Then go find the things to do that. Don't look at the technology first. Decide what you want. And you've seen what I want. It just comes out on like three slides, right? I want to interact with them. I want to you know, have these goals about what their opinion about mathematics, things like that. Start small, go slow. You know, don't try to do everything. There's so much stuff around. You know, just take a basic set of things that you want to get done. This college algebra course I just taught, the next one's going to have more things in it. The one after that will have more things in it. But I just started slow, trying to stay within Canvas. I might move a little bit out of Canvas for the next one. We'll see. But I'm really happy that I started slow. I made everything fit into this small model. Don't use technology just because it's there, right? I mean, Twitter, I mean, you just go crazy with all these things. Some courses they're more important for than others, but decide what you want to do first and then use the technology that's appropriate for that. That's it. So, any questions? Yes? Oh, yeah. Time periods, were you allowed for that? Uh, I didn't. Uh, I left everything open forever. So if people came in at the last week and wanted to get into it, they could. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, so the people that, say, responded to a survey in the first week, they would have to come back and see it if they wanted to see what other people 
Yes, right. That's right. That was all up to them. I, I just tried to make it interesting and hope that they would come there and look around. I would do exactly this, and then I would go into class and do what I needed to do. I, would, I wouldn't change. This is a hybrid course, because then I can go into class and answer questions, do all that other stuff. I might take a few things out here and there, but I'm sure going to put her on there if she's answering questions, things like that. I wouldn't change it. I really wouldn't. Yeah, go ahead. I spent almost no time on the discussion for it. The TAs did it all. There was very little them asking questions on specific problems and getting answers from their peers. I think because we have so many videos, that problem got solved without it. So I spent almost no time on that. Go ahead. How many TAs did you have? Uh, I had four TAs. But I have a little publishing business. I have four, anywhere from 14 to 20 people working in the office. So I just made some of them TAs, some of them that wanted to do that. And I, but I didn't let them go crazy with it. They could take an hour of each day that they worked and, you know, go in and, but they, they really liked it. But um, look, you can have students, you have, you can find people that want to be TAs, but it didn't take that much time anyways. Go ahead. Was there a set time frame when you did the students? Yes, by the end of it, it was like a 14 week class. And by the end of it, uh, it was live for another three weeks, then it was over. So, so, yes, go ahead. Um, I, it got down to where I could do a chapter a day. You know, I could do a whole chapter, opening video. I have these take five videos. You can see these little take five videos of mine on YouTube, YouTube front slash math TV. So I had already done those videos years ago. I just pulled those in. But that's the thing. There's so many videos on the Internet. That's an easy part of the whole thing. Uh, uh, YouTube uh, slash math TV. Um, let me go back to this real quick. Um, no, don't open that. Right? Uh, you can email me, pat at mckeg.com. Answer any questions you have. The video's on YouTube, front slash math TV. Um, I'm teaching this class again, but I'm making it a seven-week class, and I'm calling it Getting Ready for College Algebra. I'm very excited about it because it's not college algebra. It's getting ready for college algebra, which means now the study skills and that become much more important. It's a much bigger part of the course, so, and it's only seven weeks. That's going to be really fun. Go ahead. Uh, th I'm glad you asked that. I, all the communication I got from people, I was really surprised how conscientious and happy they were. I just expected just a lot of complaints and things. I just didn't get them. People were just happy. They would point out mistakes in videos and things like that, but generally very conscientious, and all the people that finished were very happy. I can tell you that. Um, Do you know why people didn't finish? I don't. Now, I'll tell you the other thing about this. Next class I'm the next move, we're going to charge $30. So we're going to see what the difference is between a small fee and a free course. I think there's going to be a big difference, and I think I'm going to get much more of that kind of feedback. It should be great. Go ahead. Um, did they have slides for everything? No. That, everything that you see on there, the we made the textbook from the company and all the videos from the company free. So it all, and it all appeared within Canvas Click. It pops up in a new tab, whatever you want. Yes. Yeah, um, for the videos I do, it's just a, it's a, a little more expensive Canon HD camera, but it has to have a FireWire out cable that will go into the Mac. So FireWire is, is the key. At, mine are a little old, so you maybe talk to somebody else. And then uh, in the Macintosh with iMovie, look, iMovie with a HD camera hooked to it is like a $250,000 video editing studio. It's yeah. unbelievable. And that screencast I told you about, that has all kinds of editing in it too. So 
That part of it is really simple, but you just have to make sure that you can get an external mic, and in my case, I use FireWire. FireWire out from the camera and into the computer, and sometimes they'll have different connectors on them. Now, maybe some of the stuff today is a little different, I don't know, um, but the price of all these things has gone way down. Go ahead. I'm not good at technology. I don't know everything that goes on behind here, but I'm, I know video. I've been doing video. I've been in the studio hundreds of hours. I know video. Yeah. Don't try to make it too good. Just go on the, just use the eyesight camera. Hi, good morning. Here I am. This is what we're going to do. Click. It's off. It doesn't have to. Look, you can tell the color on some of this is faded. Some of them are too dark. I don't worry about that. Just get the information to them. I got one more question right here. Yeah. Um, what, uh, how are you going to charge $30 for these? They'll come to my website, and they'll have to pay $30 to get access to that book. And also a comment. If you don't use ScreenFlow, uh, if you don't have a Mac, you can't use ScreenFlow, but Camtasia, we do it as well. There's a bunch of stuff like that. Hey, thank you so much for coming. I'm really happy with this turnout. Thanks.